Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is an exciting one because I'm here with Ronnie and we are going to be making sorrel and Jamaican fruit cake or Christmas cake. Right, that's what you call it? Okay, so it's late at night, we're all exhausted, but we have to get the prep work done. So that's what we're doing tonight with regards to the sorrel. Let's take it over. Yes, so um, this is all trying to Caribbeanize. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> whatever, Jamaicanize. Jamaican eyes lit cup and um, we are trying to do sorrel and there was an incident with the Easter bun and so I will okay we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> <laughs> and so we're gonna make a disclaimer in terms of the traditional ingredients including uh, pimento which mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of pimento so right. we're gonna exclude it, that uh, exclude it and kind of make it um, in my traditional way mm -hmm. now we bought the sorrel probably about uh, maybe about four or five days ago and they were nice, fresh, and pretty, but sorrel will go off pretty quickly if you're right. not careful. So after bringing it home, we place it in the refrigerator, and usually you're either going to be preparing this freshly picked, or um, if you're overseas, sometimes they dry it out and send it to you dry. So what we have is about two pounds of uh, freshly picked sorrel, and that is in this container. Mm -hmm. On the separate side by the stove there, I have a pot of boiling water that's going. So I've got two pounds of sorrel and about nine cups of boiling water, and that's usually a good ratio. So not your traditional ginger crusher, but this guy's gonna come in later on very nicely for the stew when it's afterwards. So I'm crushing some ginger, and I'm going to be placing this in the sorrel. But you didn't peel the ginger? No, Ma, we didn't peel the ginger. Oh. You just wash the ginger very carefully, crush it. Place it in there. I, I tend to like mine very strong, so um, I use quite a bit of ginger. So instead of the pimento seed, what we're going to be using is some cloves. And I'm going to be putting in probably about this much clove in it. So that was like a handful of cloves. A handful of cloves, and normally you would use some cinnamon leaves. But I don't have cinnamon leaves, so I'm going to be using some cinnamon sticks instead and hoping that these come out well. They're not that strong. Oh, but that's the next one. Yeah. Or so inside of there. Some people put the sugar in at this stage to um, get a rich soaking of the sugar within the soil before you strain it off the next time. I don't like to sweeten it ahead of time, I sweeten it afterwards. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the water to it. Now, when you're preparing sorrel, you'll hear people talk about boiling sorrel. You don't boil the sorrel. You have the water separately uh, prepared. So I've got hot water, which I just turn the stove off here. And what I'm going to be doing now is pouring the hot water over the sorrel. I want to be very careful with this because it's hot. Can't do this with kids around. Definitely not. And like I said, this was about nine cups of water to about two pounds of freshly picked uh, sorrel. If you're using dried sorrel, the, the ratio will be different because the sorrel when dry shrinks quite considerably. So now I've got my um, hot water poured over my sorrel with my ginger, cinnamon and cloves involved. And this is kind of what you want to see hot. from the mixture. So that's all the sorrel juice that we're going to get. Sorry, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need more. I wanted like By a whole the time bucket. You, you, you add some of the other stuff that's going to go into it. And I will tell you about that later. You have to be over 18 to be able to drink it. Oh, great. No, no and worries. And add a little bit more to it. <laughs> okay. And what I'm going to do now is simply cover this and let it steep for about 12 hours and that's the the first part in terms of how you prepare um, the sorrel and in part two I'm going to show you how we sweeten it strain it and um, make the drink so when does the liquor come in oh in part two in part two hmm. okay stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> I know you're excited calm down <laughs> okay so we um, did our steeping of the sorrel yesterday evening it's been more than 12 hours it should be nice and steep and rich. So the next step is to go ahead and strain it into a container. 
We have to add a few ingredients to it for taste. If you're diabetic, you obviously want to watch the amount of sugar that you're putting within the sorrel. Um, but you're not diabetic, right? <laughs> so we're going to start with a cup and a half um, of brown sugar. Brown in sugar our sorrel. or white sugar? Brown sugar. Oh, okay. Didn't I tell you this was a Jamaican thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think we have too much in the container. It's all right. Oh, yeah, you need to stir. Hold on. A spoon. This is why she does the cooking and not me. Okay, so we've added some sugar to it. And the next step now is to um, add some more of the exciting stuff uh, to it. So I'm going to use two ingredients. This one has got a, a label that's white and it's uh, very famous um, in Jamaica as well and we add a uh, fair bit I'm glad you can smell that <laughs> it's strong yep. and it's important now for all the people who passed on this year to the other side you have to pour a little bit extra for them so I know three people, how many people do you know? none okay well there is enough there for three people rest their soul mm -hmm. so this is um, the white Ray and, and nephew, y'all. It's Ray and nephew. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and and this, this is, this is my favorite. This is yeah, I love label. this one. This is dope. And this has to be every sorrow that we're doing back home. So, so what is the measurement, though? I guess it's to taste? That's to taste. Okay. Um, she's a lot more fun when she's drunk, so... <laughs> yes, let's put some in there. Alright. And is this it? Well, you're going to taste it afterwards and you're going to What about, me like, that's lemon? It, it looks... It's, it, Seems like a drink that would need some lime juice or some lemon or something to make the, the flavors pop. No lemon? What were y'all Jamaicans <laughs> doing? <laughs> Alright, let's try this. Now, recommendation is that you don't put it um, or put ice in it because then when the ice melts Oops. into it, then it dilutes it and it takes away from the overall thing. So what I'm going to do is actually put this in the fridge it's nice. and let it chill and then it can be served afterwards. Oh, we finna be lit this Christmas. <laughs> drink up, drink up. And this is nice. Really nice. That was easy. That was very, super very easy. easy. It's a really easy drink. So I thought it was something more like serious the way that you were making it seem like it, we had so much preparation. This is you just boil the soil, oh, add the seasoning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, you be quiet. The fruit cake is coming. This, this is the preview. All right, guys. So um, the soil was good. The complaint was that it was going to run out before Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost done. <laughs> somebody keeps pouring it and keep drinking it. So this is part two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attempt to make a real Jamaican fruit cake. Attempt. Lid, on the other hand, is going to make some cardboard. It's a little bit moist for all the special people. <laughs> Whatever. So I'm making a vegan gluten-free version of the Jamaican fruit cake. It's not gonna go well. Whatever. It's We're gonna, gonna see. Go well. So at the end of this, um, tomorrow, it's Christmas Eve actually, so tomorrow Christmas Day, mm -hmm. uh, when the family comes, I'm gonna have them blind taste both versions and see who wins. You know those movies where you start at the end <laughs> and then you work backwards? I think maybe it's just how we should end this. <laughs> Alright, okay, go ahead. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is um, cream our butter and our sugar. So for my um, recipe, it's 8 ounces of butter and um, 2 cups of sugar. So I'm gonna put those in my bowl. Okay, actually, pause. I need to get a bowl and I need to, because I'm doing my version. So I'm not gonna put as much sugar because those fruits look very sweet. Oh yeah, my fruit cake not gonna be that sweet either. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me go I'm ahead and get I'm gonna be creaming yeah, my butter and yeah. sugar <laughs> while you go and do whatever it is that you go and do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the reviews will be stellar. <laughs> And what I've been told is that um, you just basically kind of grind this out and you want to make it nice and creamy, mixing out the sugar into the butter. I believe that there's technology for this kind of stuff, but um, I want to honor the uh, tradition more or less by um, rubbing it with a wooden spoon. By the way, we use I Can't Believe It's Not Butter because that's the only butter we had in the house. Think it's going to come out the same? Yeah. You never had any anchor butter? No. Things rough around here, boy. The cost of living has been through the roof. <laughs> Alright, mine is wet. That can't whip yet. Really? How much butter you put? <laughs> it 
It's good. I've been baking cakes forever. Matter of fact, I'm going to make You've another You've been cake. trying to bake a cake forever. <laughs> Holy tail. All right, so um, we've creamed the sugar and the butter mm -hmm. in the bowl. You've attempted to do yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're, we, we've made some progress. Mm -hmm. And um, next, my recipe calls for um, the eggs. Okay. And for the eggs, I'm going to use technology in terms of an uh, uh, egg mixer and mm -hmm. mix them in one at a time. So, um, yeah, we're going to get rid of the spoon. And uh, we have this thing, which I'm sure. God, you're corny as hell. You're going to mix your eggs. You're going to put your eggs. And Silex okay. invested good time and effort to invent so I wouldn't have to stand here with a wooden spoon. Okay, I, in the eggs. I'm not going to use eggs, obviously. So, I'm using uh, applesauce. There's a few ingredients that I can use in lieu of egg. I use either applesauce or, hold on, um, or flaxseed meal, I can use that, or I can use chia seeds, uh, or I can use the water from the chickpeas, which I know sounds gross, but it actually is a really good egg replacement. But for this recipe, I'm thinking applesauce is eggs. the best thing. No, I don't want eggs. <laughs> so I'm going to just put in, how many eggs did you say? 12 eggs? Mine so, cost 12 eggs. Yeah. So I'm probably just going to put in like four tablespoons of applesauce, and I think that should be okay. <laughs> they should be interested. Okay, so we're moving along. Um, next stage, we added our nutmeg, our salt, our baking powder, um, cinnamon, browning. Uh, oh, I forgot to add that. Browning. So put some, some of it into yours. It's supposed to have some mixed spice and vanilla as well. A lot of it. Some of it is science. Some of it is art. So it's uh, creativity when you when you're baking, and those are the sort of flavors and um, spices that I like. So the eggs have been beaten in. Um, How much browning did you put? Sorry, three teaspoon. Oops, that's okay. <laughs> this is how we innovate. <laughs> okay, and um, the next item that's going to go in is the three cups of flour, and then we're going to add some of our fruit batter, which has been soaking in rum for a bit of a time now. So um, you're putting that in yours as well. Oh yeah. So I'm doing. I, in addition to what he said, I'm. I found this in the cupboard, and I felt like. I should use it. Uh, it's rum extract with other natural flavors. So we're going to put some of this in there. And then I'm also, because it's a gluten-free cake, I'm going to be using oat flour. Uh, I do also have all-purpose gluten-free flour, but I think the oat flour is going to be the perfect texture for this type of cake. So that's what we're doing. By the way, y'all, we only had one beater in the house and he's monopolizing it. So I'm doing everything by hand. So if my cake does not come out as good as it could be, it's because... The excuses of such. <laughs> Okay, so this is my um, fruit batter or fruit mixture. The fruit has been soaking for some time in red label and a generous serving of white rum. And um, I don't like to be eating chunks of fruits in the cake when I've eaten it, so we've blended it out thoroughly. And now we're going to add the, uh, the fruit batter with the rum included into our cake mix. Okay, so um, the fruit's been added to the batter um, along with the mixture of the, the good stuff. And now we're folding in the flour. It's gonna be three cups of flour that goes into this, but you have to add it gradually. So I put it in about a half cup at a time, mix it in, and you're also checking for consistency. You don't want it to come out um, too stiff, too dry. So uh, mix them and mixing it in as I go along. All right, y'all, this is my fruit cake. I tried to like engrave it with an L, but you can't see anything. So I just need to make sure that we know whose is whose. And then this is Ronnie's. He made such a big, Voila. yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> he made such a big batch. We end up putting the rest in there, but for the purposes of this video, this is Ronnie's. Um, can you just tell the people, how did the batters taste? Hello people. <laughs> <laughs> Both batters at this stage, being honest, Tastes very similar. Um, hold on, hold on, because I have to get in the frame because ain't nobody gonna believe it. <laughs> but so let's reiterate. <laughs> he tasted his batter and he said, "Dang, this is gonna be good." And then I said, "Taste my batter." And then he tasted my batter and said, "Oddly, very oddly." Yes, it's so good. So yeah, I know what I'm doing. I don't. I, I know. I don't tell y'all foolishness. Okay. Anyway, so we're gonna put this in the oven. Um, you will see us. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, we're going to take it out and then we're going to soak it with some more rum, you said? Yes. I love that. So we're going to soak it with a little bit more rum and then tomorrow we are going to have the people decide whose cake is better. The people are going to vote for me. <laughs> Alright, All right, bye. <laughs>
it tastes like fruit cake. Okay. But it's a little bit more um like cake. yeah, more like cake, less dense. It's more fluffy, which is nice because I don't like that. So it's fluffy. The mm -hmm. pale one is fluffy, and what about the um the spicing? The yeah, everything else tastes yeah. normal. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Um, it's just the texture. It tastes it's more like cake. Fluffy. It's, it's it's a cake. Okay. <coughs> now let's try the black one. Because I can tell that this one is denser. Okay. Did they sign like liability waivers? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a lawyer. <laughs> okay, so now you try the black one. How's the black one taste? I guess, I guess the. Um... It tastes like the white one, but. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fluffy. I would say that the spices don't come through as much on this. Yeah, this one, this one has a little bit less spice, spices. Uh -huh. But the texture is more like. Fruitcake. Fruit cake. This one has more spice, but the texture is more like. Like cake. Okay. Yeah, this so, one is more fudgy. More fudgy. Like, okay. Like fudgy. All right. So then, if we had to say, if you had to rate them, how would we rate the the white, the browner one? Out of, Out of five. Five being the worst or the best. Five being the best. Oh, I give it like a four. So the brown one's a four. Mm -hmm. And if you had to rate the black one, how do you rate that? A four. Tara. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make a choice as to which one is the better one. Come on, Dwight. Yeah, you have. Yeah. You're not hurting anybody's feeling. Four and a half. Okay, okay, the black one's four and a half. Because the texture is more like I don't like fruit cake, period. So you guys both fail. Okay. <laughs> you like fruit cake, so what do you think? <coughs> I rate the light one. I give the light one a four and a half. Okay. And the black one? Four. Okay. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I guess I guess we know by now who made what. Uh, who made what? Huh? Luca made the fluffy one and Ronnie made the dense one. So uh, suckers, I made the black one which is vegan and gluten free and the fluffy brown one is the Jamaican who said he was going to teach me how to make food cake. Well, do, do I agree to the fluffy one better? Yeah, but Cookie rated the black one better. So we're still on a draw? Okay, exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, you all thought automatically it's because they always criticize my gluten-free flour. No, it's more. true. This is like... Mine tastes more like food cake. No, no. No. It looks like <laughs> It tastes like fruitcake. The spices are not as coming fruit. out, no, but, yeah, the, but texture the texture is, is more like fruitcake, yeah, which is remarkable yeah. considering that I didn't use any egg, mm -hmm. I didn't use any flour. Well, I guess that's why it would come out like fruitcake. Right? But fruitcake recipe calls for twelve eggs. Really? Yes. He used a Jamaican. He used a Jamaican. He, used a Jamaican, um, he should be. So I'm gonna say I won. I'm gonna call it that. Merry Christmas. <laughs>